All right, guys, what's going on, you guys? <laughs> How are y'all doing today? Okay, Christmas Eve, special, very special night tonight. So I want to wish you all guys have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas Eve. I um, hope you have a fine, amazing and, and great dinner with your beloved ones, right? And uh, yeah, but this never stops, man, and football never stops. And of course, today is the same thing. I will be talking about, of course, um, Real Madrid, Mbappe and all that stuff. But today, let me tell you something. It is my first streaming in Twitch because I already have my Twitch channel. So I'm going to change the name of my Twitch channel, right? It's going to be same thing, Dr. Hoda e, uh, ENG, right? Uh, it's going to be a sports show, okay? I don't, I, I just don't want to uh, talk about Real Madrid because they're, I mean, in sports, in football and all that stuff. There are more interesting things, right? And uh, especially when you are talking in English, for me, it's, it's a kind of difficult as I'm from Spain, right? And in Spain, I have my Spanish channel in Twitch and YouTube and all this stuff. But uh, I just talk about pretty much Real Madrid and all the things that are happening, but are not interested interesting for other people outside Spain, right? So that's why I have to change a little bit the content here. But today, as you know, I have, I mean, I am very good friends with Jose Feliz Diaz. And he, I mean, once in a while, he shows up in my show and we talk about pretty much everything. And this time we had to catch up, right? Has been quite a while time without uh, bringing him over, considering the uh, World Cup break, right? And um, I was looking forward to asking him about a bunch of things regarding to Real Madrid. And finally, yesterday he showed up, right? And we could talk. I mean, we had the opportunity to talk a little bit more regarding to Real Madrid and all that stuff. So we will be talking about that. But also we will be reacting to different news and, and watching the Fabrizio Romano's channel and all that stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to change the scene. And here we go. Jose Feliz Diaz on one corner, right? And Dr. Jota in the other corner. So let's uh, listen to Jose Feliz Diaz. Here, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you um, oriented, right? Because right here, I had in this right moment, right, of the video, we already had like four, 40 minute interview asking him about different players of Real Madrid. But I want to go straight to the point and ask him about, and I mean, talk about uh, the thing with Kylian Mbappe okay so I'm gonna play the video as of this moment so you guys I'm gonna translate everything and I'm gonna try to ex explain what happened what was his point what was my point and uh, it's important because the day before he showed up in another show which is called Ruben Martin show and uh, he was talking about that but Ruben Martin was asking him just asking, right? Just saying, hey, uh, what about Kelly and Mbappe? What about this guy and this older guy? But my point as a Madridista fan was, okay, Jose Felix, but I mean, there's a bunch of points that doesn't make any sense to me uh, when it comes to the signing of Kelly and Mbappe. So can you explain me a little bit why is this happening or why is this not going to happen and things like that, right? The interview was a completely different story. And I think that the people really loved the interview the way I, I put it, right? So, well, let's see. Preguntarte, José Félix, te voy a hacer más reflexiones que otra cosa de, de lo que a mí, en cierto modo, me cuadra y no me cuadra. Ahora mismo, Mbappé tiene una situación que creo que es completamente diferente a la del verano y es la siguiente. En verano él tenía que... Okay, what I'm doing here is not only asking him about Kelly and Mbappé. What I'm, what I'm putting on the table is... For so many people, I mean, Jose Felix Diaz, the day before, he said, okay, so uh, what, I, uh, what I've been told from Real Madrid is we don't want, that is I quote here from Jose Felix Diaz. The day before, he said, what I've been told from Real Madrid is we don't want to waste more time with this guy. We've already lost a lot of time with this guy, right? So when I heard that, I thought, okay, but this is not the same situation than the situation that we lived or went through the summer. It's a completely different story. Back in summer, Mbappe had two choices, right? One was to come to Real Madrid, and the second one was to renew his contract with Real Madrid, right? So right now, there's only one way for him. There's only one choice for him, and that way is through. That way is Real Madrid, and that's it. There's no more. There's no more. 
right? So I cannot understand why the board members of Real Madrid don't want to waste more time with Kylian Mbappe when in reality, what can happen is, number one, the guy's super nuts and mad with PSG because he feels betrayed, right? And this is something that we know. Number two, the guy has again the opportunity he will he will probably push to leave PSG. And there's no other alternative to Real Madrid. There's no other way for him. He really wants to play for Real Madrid. That's it, period, right? So there's no reason for panic within Real Madrid. There's no reason for the board members to panic, to feel like we are going to be trapped in the same thing again for the third time, for the second time. No. It's a very different situation. Right now, there's no other way for Kylian Mbappe. So that's why, that is what I'm telling to Jose Feliz Diaz uh, that I want them to think. It's a very different world right now. ...entre ir al Real Madrid o renovar con el PSG. ¿Qué es lo que puede hacer al Real Madrid pensar este tío nos la va a pegar otra vez? Porque desde mi punto de vista, él ya no tiene otra alternativa. El único camino que tiene es el, al Real Madrid. Lo, ¿Lo ves así? ¿No lo ves así? ¿Cómo lo ves? Yo sinceramente lo veo todo imposible. Ok, the first thing, the first word he uses is I see everything impossible. Ok, let me tell you something. José Félix Díaz is a, is a great journalist in Spain. He's one of the best journalists in Spain and he has great information when it comes to Real Madrid because he's very close and we all know that in Spain. He's very close to... Um, um, Florentino Perez and, and Jose Angel Sanchez and all this stuff. But my point is, he's so close to Real Madrid, he will be probably being told what they want to be told, right? You know what I'm saying? So Real Madrid probably wants to send a message to Kylian Mbappe. So in order for them to do that, they are probably telling Jose Félix or even Josep Perero what they have to say, right? So, be careful here. It might be a trap. Ya sé que en el fútbol todo es posible, ¿eh? pero lo veo imposible. Lo veo imposible que el Madrid y el, bueno, tiene contrato en vigor. Un año más como poco. No sé si son dos o uno, porque esos son todos los misterios que ha rodeado a Mbappé ¿no? con esta renovación. ¿Tú ves eh, ahora en una mesa sentados al Calais y a Florentino Pérez negociando algo? Sí. Yeah. His second point is, man, with all the things that have happened over the past, as you know, al Calaife got super nuts against Real Madrid, got super mad at Florentino Perez because he was sus suspecting um, Real Madrid was um, not stabbing in the back, but he was kind of like uh, Real Madrid is playing behind us without telling us anything. And they thought Florentino Perez was negotiating with Kylian Mbappé uh, at their backs, right? So he got nuts with Real Madrid. And right now, Real Madrid is the public enemy of, Kylian, of uh, um, PSG and al Khalifi, right? So an example is last week, Real Madrid, the females, right? Real Madrid and PSG played the champions, right? And Real Madrid uh, girls have to go and play in Paris, right? All the Real Madrid fans were forced to remove the Real Madrid jerseys, right? In order for them to be able to get into the stadium, which is completely unfair, right? But they were forced to do that. So the point is, right now, PSG and Real Madrid are enemies, right? But the point is, if Mbappe really pushes hard to leave, I mean, I think that there, there, there will be a way to get out of there and try to force to al Khalifi to... I don't know, to bring him over to the table to negotiate his exit, right? That's my opinion. That's my opinion. And, and Jose Feliz Diaz responded me saying, do you see Florentino Perez and al Khalifi on the same same table? Just negotiating for, for him? I don't think so. Te, te contesto con otra pregunta. ¿Tú no ves a Jose Ángel Sánchez y al Khalifi? And my answer was another question. Don't you see... Al Khalifi and Jose Angel Sanchez. Jose Angel Sanchez is the is the second one, right? It's a kind of he's not the vice president of Real Madrid, but it's kind of right. He has enough power in within Real Madrid to negotiate every single thing. Florentino no, no tiene ni que estar, Jose Félix. 
Nada, yo lo veo imposible. O sea, yo te lo digo. But he denies everything. He, he says, no, 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 I don't see anything about that. Digo, lo veo, lo veo hoy en, con el desgaste que sufrió en Madrid, lo veo imposible. Otra cosa es que ese contrato finalice en algún momento determinado, porque aparte es que el PSG, no le, el PSG se va a negar a, ne, a, a negociar con el Madrid. O sea, es que, es que tú ves las declaraciones del que la hice llenas de rabia hacia el Madrid. Ok, en his opinion, PSG. Uh is going to reject any kind of negotiation with Real Madrid. They might negotiate with any other one, but not Real Madrid. So I don't know, man. It's it's getting hard, this this thing of Kylian Mbappé. Madrid. Ver los gestos de Alkelaifi llenos de ira hacia el Madrid y hacia todo lo que representa el Real Madrid. Pues el otro día fueron a jugar las, las chicas en la Champions, en el partido decisivo, y los aficionados del Madrid eran proscritos ahí en París. Con el estadio medio vacío. Yo creo que, sinceramente, yo lo, veo, yo lo veo, todo eso lo veo imposible. Que el fútbol derriba frontera, el muro, lo que tú quieras, también, ¿de acuerdo? Pero yo creo que el muro que levantó Mbappé es tan alto que, joder, para derribarlo. Es que no llega nadie arriba para, para empezar a echar abajo ese muro, ¿eh? Yo, yo, yo lo, veo, lo veo como tú, pero es que hay otra parte de mí, José Félix, y viendo cómo... Ha... Ok. He established again the wall, the wall Kylian Mbappe built up last summer with Real Madrid is so tall, right? It's so high right now, it's impossible to go through it, to overcome it, right? And there's no way. I mean, he's very, he's very sure about that. Whereas myself, what I think, man, is, is in a different way, but I don't know. actuado Florentino, lo que hablamos tantas veces y que se le elogia. El mirar siempre por los intereses del club por encima de los suyos incluso. As you can see, guys, I was I was all the time like uh, pushing hard to to Jose Feliz Díaz like he was the president of Real Madrid. I was all the time pushing him. Incluso, ¿tú no crees que Florentino es una persona capaz de hacer de tripas corazón y decir es que este tío me interesa para mi club aunque le odie por lo que nos ha hecho? Ya, pero estamos hablando de un contrato de más de 100 millones anuales, eh, de un traspaso que si el PSG se atuviera a negociar, no sé cuánto podría pedir, no sé cuánto, sería una salvajada, si rechazó quedándole un año de contrato, ¿cuánto fue la última oferta? 200 millones. Entonces, como yo sé que Florentino Pérez defiende al Real Madrid por encima de todo, yo creo que en esa situación es imposible, ¿por qué no? Porque se rompería todo. Eh, Ahora me vas a decir, no, pero en papel podría traer mucho dinero. Bueno, vale, pero uf, estamos diciendo que el éxito del Madrid de la última temporada es un vestuario tranquilo. ¿Y qué haces con Vinicius si ven en papel, por ejemplo? No, y me todo el tiempo la misma cosa, la misma cosa. Es como todo el tiempo, la misma cosa. ¿Qué vas a hacer con Vinicius Jr. y Rodrigo Goyes, right? To me, it's not a question, man. You'll figure it out. If somebody, you, you, you have to, you all have to put in the, in the Ancelotti's shoes, right? If the president of Real Madrid, you, you're the coach of Real Madrid, right? If the president brings you over players like Kylian Mbappe and uh, Erling Haaland, for example, are you going to have any problem with these guys? Not at all, man. You'll figure it out. You will know what you have to do. I mean, Carlo Ancelotti is a very tactically sounded guy and capable of putting these guys in the right place and mix them up and uh, getting something good for Real Madrid. You know what I'm saying? That is not a point. You, you'll probably use to uh, utilize to Rodrigo Goyes and Vinicius Jr. at some point or even you can mix them up. For example, there's another scenario. Imagine Benzema um, is not performing in the rest of the season left, right, ahead. Is not performing okay, right? Because he's not recovering okay, and and and, and he, the the injury is not healing or whatever, right? And then you have another choice. You have a an alternative, right? Well, you need another attacker, regardless is Erling Haaland, Kylian Mbappe, or whoever it is. But you have you have to have another player at the same level. It's not okay to utilize to people like Mariano Diaz or Hazard as a number nine. There's no point. You know what I'm saying? So if you have to kill Kylian Mbappe, do you think Kylian Mbappe will mind him to play in another different position? No, I mean, I'm not going to say don't place Kylian Mbappe in the right side, in the right wing, because it's not, I mean, it doesn't make any sense, right? But if you bring him over, if you bring him to the close to the box, right, 
not extreme to the left side, to the left line of the field, but you put him, however you put him, interior, man, I don't think it's, it's, it's big thing for him. It's not big deal. And he's still a very good player. And that position is not going to harm his performances. I'm, I'm, that's my point. But anyways, man, you'll figure it out. That's it. You have the best players in the world. What, what else do you want? To, I mean, what else do you want? You have the best players in the world. Come on. Hombre, a, ni a nivel táctico, hombre, yo creo que tenemos ahí, voy a hacer un poco de abogado del diablo, yo creo que tenemos ahí un, un gestor de la táctica como Ancelotti que... Yeah, that's what I'm telling him. We have a very um, tactics manager, which is the best, in my opinion. He's been placing players together like Rodrigo Goes, Asensio, Benzema, and Vinicius Jr. at the same, at a time. So, I mean, four forwards, four attackers in the same starting eleven. Joder, te ha puesto a Rodrigo con Benzema, con Asensio y con, y con Vinicius. Si es capaz sí, sí, de sí, pero sí, sí, y la idea, y, y con, cuando el año pasado se estaba hablando de que no iban a fichar a Haaland porque venía Mbappé y podía jugar de nueve, eso es cierto, claro que puede jugar de nueve. La selección francesa Mbappé ha, elegido, ha exigido jugar por la izquierda, arrancar por la izquierda. Yeah, his point here is que Lian Mbappé demanded to the national team of France to play from the left, starting from the left, right, in the left wing. Which is okay, because it's probably, it's arguably the best position for him. But the thing is, man, if you have any other choice, if you are Kylian Mbappe, all the things he's learned over the last months, he feels betrayed, okay? Remember this, he feels betrayed. He doesn't like, he's not comfortable within PSG, okay? Neither with Alcala, if he, nor with Neymar, for example. And that is something Jose Felix Dia told me. Relationship between Neymar and Kylian Mbappe is completely broken. They're not getting along anymore. So. Sí, 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 sí. En el PSG ha exigido arrancar por la izquierda. Yo simplemente digo, cuando a veces hablamos de fichajes de uno de otro, hay que ver cómo encajan en los grupos, cómo encajan en la plantilla, ¿no? Y entonces, aquí yo lo que te lo que traslado a vosotros, lo que te traslado a ti es. Vale, perfecto. Entonces, con Vinicius, ¿qué hacemos? Ya. Yeah. Yeah, 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 sí, sí, sí. No es por echar abajo. You don't have to do anything with Vinicius, man. <laughs> I mean, it's already done. I mean, there's no point. I mean, I told you, you'll figure it out. Ilusión, no. Pues yo te digo lo, lo que la realidad. Luego eh, llegaría el caso y ah, pues sabría que buscar. ¿Cuál cuando me dices guardio? Pues guardio y para qué el Madrid quiere a guardio? Pues, pues vete tú a saber las vueltas que da. Y, y si cuando el año pasado fichan a Chomeni, eh, ya existía la posibilidad de que casi miró se fuera, pero no se concretó hasta agosto. Pero no se ficha a tu a tu a Chomeni para que se vaya Casemiro, sino como una proyección, un trabajo, un proyecto, un, una estrategia. Eh, yo, sinceramente, tal cual se está moviendo el club de dar la bandera del Real Madrid a Vinicius, me choca mucho, me choca mucho que, que se la den ahora, de repente, a Mbappé, después de lo que ha hecho. Yo te recuerdo que el Real Madrid sacó un comunicado defendiendo a Vinicius, ¿eh? hace poco. Sí, no, no, total, totalmente de acuerdo, pero es que a mí me da la sensación... Poniendo un poco en, en, la, en la situación de, de Mbappé, un tío que, que coño, uno, unos días después de haber renovado con el PSG, pide, intenta salir del PSG porque no le traen a nadie de los que ha pedido, porque el entrenador no es de su gusto. O sea, es pues un demuestra una inmadurez, demuestra una inmadurez tremenda, porque eh, el dibujo que tenía, el escenario que tenía, el panorama que tenía en el PSG era el, el, el que tiene, quiere decirte. So we were kind of arguing all the time, Jose Felix and me, and uh, the interview, right? It was like this way all the time, right? Because I was, I, w I wasn't the, I want, I didn't want it to be the kind of journalist which is asking to another journalist about Kylian Mbappe. I just wanted to be, and I'm actually, I mean, I, I, I am, I'm actually on the uh, the Real Madrid fan who really wants to know what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? So that is the point. And that was the point of the interview. So we were kind of like in this kind of talk back and forth, you know. But the thing is, I mean, the bottom line is Jose Vélez Díaz sees very, very difficult for Real Madrid to go ahead and sign Kylian Mbappé. But my point is, it's not going to be Real Madrid. We don't have to take the initiative, right, to try to bring him over. The thing is, he has to make every single thing right now. He has to step ahead and say, hey, I just want to go to Real Madrid. I just want to leave PSG, and I just want to go to you with um, 
I just want to go with you guys and play. So that's it. We don't have to do anything. Ramadi doesn't even have to move, right, to go ahead and try to uh, make the call. No, we don't have to make any call, right? Right now, everything is about, everything is up to Kylian Mbappe. That's it. That's it. That is the point. So we were all the time uh, talking about it, and there's no difference between here, right, and the rest of the interview. So main conclusion here, guys, uh, for you to know today it's uh it's so difficult and complicated right now but if he wants if he really wants to come and play for Real Madrid I think there's going to be one chance for Frontino to open the door and say hey you want to come okay just uh make the call just um call me whatever and say hey I just want to go I just want to get out of Paris Saint-Germain and I just want to figure it out how to get the things down with you guys with Real Madrid and say hey because right now the 90% of the Madridistas really are not going to say hey Kylian Mbappe but they're not okay with the way he did the things in the past okay but it, but if he really wants to come and play for Real Madrid I think it's going to be one chance for him but let's see no I mean nobody really knows in football